know the law. Yeah, there's laws. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. That man, featured in a seven on your side investigation of a squatter standoff last month, now under arrest. The case, one of many gaining attention as lawmakers who are now working to change squatter laws. Yeah, investigative reporter Dan Crowell, you've been on this story since the beginning. Our jaws were on the floor when you brought that initial story with that standoff, and you've been following the life cycle. Now, yesterday, spending the day in court uh, with more on Rodriguez's arrest. What's the, I mean, this is crazy. Well, this investigation started right here. It launched on mornings at 10. The Queen's DA watched it, and she decided to launch an investigation of her own. In that original story, the homeowner was arrested and taken away in handcuffs for protecting her own home. This time, the accused squatter was in handcuffs, appearing before a judge in court yesterday. Brian, anything to say about what happened today? Accused squatter Brian Rodriguez walked out of the courtroom with his head and eyes covered. But he wasn't camera shy last month when our cameras were rolling during a standoff he had with the homeowner. Adele Andaloro says Rodriguez moved into the Queen's house she inherited in the middle of the night and refused to leave. So Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, a for, being in my, house, for being in my own home. Police arrested her for changing the locks on her own home, something you can't do if someone claims to live there for 30 days. They later dropped the charges. And the Queen's DA started investigating after seeing for herself what happened. We have the benefit of time, right? We're lawyers, we're not police officers. In the courtroom, prosecutors charged Rodriguez with burglary, grand larceny, and possession of stolen property. His attorney told the judge he's the victim, claiming he signed a bogus lease with an unnamed real estate broker. When we asked him for a copy of that lease last month, he wouldn't show it. Show us the proof. But who are you for me to show? I showed it to cops. Dan with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you don't I'll want show to show you. it. Come here, brother. I like that. I, I, would, I would like to see it. He pulled up a document. It wasn't a lease. This is a bill. Is and after court, we asked again. Where's the lease? Do you have the lease or the paperwork sir, that he claims he had? Sir, a disgrace. That was his attorney's response. His client faces up to 15 years in prison if convicted. You can't walk into a house that's not yours and claim you have a right to be there. I thank the media for all the attention that they have given. Uh, to this story um, and for being here today because I do think it's an important message to send. Rodriguez is now wearing an ankle monitor and a judge ordered him not to have any contact with the homeowner or the home in question itself. But the problem continues because prosecutors say he was renting out rooms of that home to other people and making money from it. <laughs> now they have paperwork that they paid and it's right. Gonna and be Adele tells me this morning that those people are still inside the home. So we'll keep you posted on what happens with that. What happens next from here? Well, the Brian Rodriguez appears in court next month and this will be a long process and we'll follow it every step of the way. Now there was an initial case when you started this series uh, at 10 here that was the couple that brought the home in Queens for what a couple of million dollars yeah. and they still can't get in it. Where does that stand? The Landa family had another hearing yesterday. They were hoping to have resolution, but instead they were faced with even more delays in the courtroom. You might remember this. The Landa family purchased a home in Douglas in Queens back in October for, as Sandra said, $2 million, but they haven't been able to move in. The caretaker of the former owner, Brett Flores, refuses to leave. He says he has a license to be there from the previous owner who died. Yesterday in court, after a half dozen other hearings, Flores added a new attorney to his team, plus a new judge was assigned in the case, which caused some delays, and now Flores' attorneys are actually considering a possible trial by jury. His attorney tells us that the land has agreed to pay him $140,000 to help with the sale of the home, and he needs the money. Mr. Flores, why won't you just move out? It seems pretty simple. My lawyers are speaking on my behalf. He needs the money to procure adequate housing for his family and once he gets that money there's nothing more he wants to do than leave. The Landis told me they did offer Flores money to leave due to all the court hearings and the delays that were happening but they say he refused the money and actually asked for more. Huh. So this continues again for another hearing and another hearing and another hearing. I think that was the seventh hearing they had in this case. Wow. Oh, so infuriating. First yeah. he showed up without an attorney, then he showed up with a new attorney, then he showed up with another new attorney, then he filed for bankruptcy, and the average eviction in New York City can take two years. And that costs money not only for the homeowners, but for Flores himself, I would imagine. Correct. Yeah. They all have to pay for their own attorneys in these cases. And one of the important things, I know we need to let you go because you got a whole lot of work to do, <laughs> is that there, uh, there is work under 
way right now for legislation to actually change the law. After watching these stories, um, four different lawmakers filed four different bills to try to prevent this from happening. Wow. I'll have more on that coming up for you probably next week. All right. Okay.